Right, I hope the wind isn't too bad. Nice and loud. All this used to be rugby pitch. Uh, these plantations weren't there. And at one time, this whole area used to be a big race course. Anyway, uh, to the matter in hand. Hi, my name is Gordon. And uh, I'm coming up here to try a couple of uh, setups of the basher. As you can see, it's been spread with muck to fertilise it. So I'm trying to nice clean patch that's uh, out of the way. And hopefully a little bit more shelter so I don't get so much wind noise. Um, my idea being is that whilst we have some trees here, which is a good place to sling a hammock perhaps, if you get caught on the tops, on the high ground, well, I suppose you've got a windmill these days to bloody hang on to, bloody things. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm all for renewable energy, but uh, this is getting a bit of a joke now. Windmills over there, windmills over there. Uh, by the way, that's uh, Bury in Manchester down there. Peel Tower, so Robert Peel from the uh, police force, that's his tower over there, commemorating him. Um, and we are in Rosendale, which is about uh, 20 miles, 18 20 miles north of Manchester. Uh, now, there's a couple of containers here with some nice smooth ground. I think we, uh, we ought, to, ought to set up there. There's a bit of a wall there as well, so it might be a bit of shelter. And that is, uh, this hill is known as Cribden, this is Cribden Repeater for, tele for, for TV, um, mobile phones, etc. etc. Uh, I don't know what these for, but obviously store something in it. Yeah, so it's being born here as well for the whole roller, so maybe they do still play rugby now and again here. <laughs> There certainly used to be football pictures at one time. Right, I think this looks ideal here. And uh, I'll just get my gear out. Right, I'm trying to shield this as best I can from the wind, but here's what I've got here. I'm going to point my feet. Uh, that is the uh, basher. Uh, it's a desert back one because I want to... I like the uh, extra light it gives inside, whereas... Um, I used to use 58 ponchos, but they're, uh, they're too light fast and they are a bit heavier. Uh, two of those weighs about the same as, uh, as the, the old, well, it's about a kilogram. That's about the same, that's a kilogram. And the old army 58 poncho is uh, a kilogram as well, but this gives more room and it's a bit more versatile, I think. Uh, these are two US government issue ones, and together they weigh in at one and a half kilograms. So, Depending on what I want to do, if I want to blend in woodland, I'll probably use that one. But I'm not. I'm, I'm experimenting at the moment, as you'll see. I put a couple of camouflage markings on. Uh, cheapest chips from uh, from uh, well, I think it costs about three quid. I think it costs six before tarpaulin. Great little things to have in your pack. They weigh practically nothing. Uh, and far better than using a poncho as a ground sheet, which you might damage with stones or whatever. You don't want to damage that. You can afford to damage that with uh, putting uh, something hot in it so it melts, but you don't want to damage your, your good ponchos or whatever. Here you'll see I also have uh, the walking type of, uh, you know, walking stick type of pole, and I like that because um, I've taken the strap out, as you can see here. Uh, now, the thing is that I can string. I can string a cord through that and use that as a, an outside support rather than interior support. The other thing that's great about uh, the walking pole is it's multifunctional. It's a tent pole. Uh, it, I use it. For, I use them for water. For like this, it's like a normal ski pole. Yeah. Uh, I've used it for wading, wading streams. Uh, I'll get out the wind a bit around here. You see, the edge of the hill there is quite steep, but if you're contouring round, you've got you've got a third point, three point support system, so you can have that uh, extended right out, holding it out down below you, which stops you from from tippling if you slip. Plus, so you've got a hand free uh, for grabbing. That's why I don't use two poles. I like to have a hand free so I can grab onto stuff if need be. Uh, so I'm nearly as good as an ice axe. If you're falling, you can dig it in with your hand. You know. 
yeah, I like, I like the walking pole, and I've been using them for over 20 years now. Uh, never been of the opinion you look a bit uh, of an old man with it, but well, I'm getting an old man now. But. <laughs> uh, right, well, so we've got, yeah, this, this is bungee cords and, uh, and cordage. For, uh, so I've, I'm fully flexible in the way I want to do it. I do use a basher and a poncho with a hammock, but today I haven't brought one. It's, it's a very lightweight one. Um, I haven't brought it today because I'm just doing ground setup, so I'll just get along to the first one. I'll be back in a tick. Right, I think we're going now. I'll try and get down to keep the wind noise out. As you can see, this is dead simple. This is the normal uh, silicon sea running down the desert basher. Uh, I don't know what we're doing, we've just pegged it, brought two of the edges together so we're forming a triangular base, yeah? This is my doorway in and you'll see what happens after I put the, uh, I'm going to mount the, uh, the walking pole here. I think you're getting the picture now, yeah? Again, I could suspend that, I could suspend that from a point and you can see I've got a fairly large pyramid. Yeah, because it's nearly square. I've seen this done with 3x3 tarps uh, and it works well for a single man or maybe a couple to squeeze. Uh, and this sort of setup is what you want to be uh, fully uh, fully protected from the wind and the rain, etc. Being a pyramid, it's, uh, it's fairly wind cheating on all sides. You've got three sides there. You might blow it on one side, but anyway. Do I need to actually figure it out? I probably don't actually. I think you get the picture there. That's your doorway. Put a string on there, bang it down. Now I'm going to show you the more open uh, setup, which will work for 99% of the time. If you're in a campsite and you want that bit of privacy, obviously you can't. It's all very well having a basher, but you want a bit of privacy for getting changed, go, you know, going to the loo and what have you. If you're out on a campsite, so you've got the, that flexibility. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to widen this front out with another peg and then you'll get the picture. Right, I'm back again. So I have words with the far east. I thought he was camping out on this doll and shooting a video and he seems to be okay with that. But he seems to have got his tractor stuck. It's rather damp around here. But that also means that the peg's going lovely. And uh, I think you'll like this setup. It's a similar one to the ones that they do with the DD tarp. But for a single person or a two person squeeze, this is uh, pretty good. That's a 6x4, uh, the 6x4 tarpaulin, which is dirt cheap. Could peg it in more if I had some more pegs, but don't need to. So I've just brought the size in the two corners in, and that's done from the first peg all out from the centre, either side. Uh, then it's pegged inside, so they're pretty stable. So any wind coming in this direction isn't going to get underneath there. Face that into the wind, you're pretty much bomb proof. Um, good seam there, you see that's very solid. Uh, because it's such a good seam, I've no hesitation putting that there. It's got the rubber end of the uh, walking pole there, and this is uh, very solid. It's the silicon steam there, although I might uh, find something that's like a cone just to spread the weight a bit out into the material a little bit more, I don't know, or something that's a bit of a but for what it costs, I mean, 15 quid, you can't give it, can you, eh? Well, 20 quid with postage, but who's arguing at that? I mean, you could get a, such an aerodynamic coffin, coffin type tent like that, could you? There you go. Now, we also have the loop there, so if I wanted a bit more room in, again, I could suspend that from something, give me a bit more room. There's also something here which I've done a little work on, which I think uh, will give me just a little bit more room. Full room that is, at the end, although it's not too bad. Uh, I'll just stop the video and then I'll go and place it in position. This is what I was going to do. This idea was, this bungee cord is going to uh, make this into a bow shape, which I've got fitted using old bicycle in the tube. I was going to fix it to one of the loops that go for the mozzie net uh, in the basher. There's two loops inside which you can use to hang a mozzie net off or a light or whatever. Uh, but unfortunately, the fiberglass has split. 
so it's not up to job, unfortunately. I think I might uh, try getting an old image here. You can, you can see what I was trying to do. Uh, the other suspension point is here. Yeah, there's two suspension points inside. One there, either side. Uh, sorry, there. The sorry, there, that's where it is on there. Because that's where I put the pole, because it's got an extra bit of reinforcement there. And one here uh, for when. So, and what I was doing is I was going to squat, put a loop underneath there. Now I'm thinking another small pole or whatever, and you can get a bit extra extra room in there. But having said that, I think I could lie in there. And there. I suppose that my tippy toes might be touching there. I could all swing upside down and, and suspend it from that point. I suppose it'll be waterproof both ways up. Uh, so I might have a bit of a, yeah, I need to have something up there just to keep it off my feet I think. But I like this, um, this is again comes from the DD Tart, uh, the YouTube videos I saw this set up and I thought it would work and it does with a two, works at a two metre by two metres uh, square tarp all in. It's a two and a half by two roughly, eight foot by seven foot. But uh, this area here is a nice porch. Uh, if we wanted, I mean these are for nothing, you could cut off a triangle. Um, you know, you've got one grommet there, you know, two grommets either side. I'm sure you could make something that would fit inside there. Yeah, cut that in, cut that in half and make it into a triangle. Mount, mount it at the top. Pegging at the bottom, and you've got this off a doorway. Even if you well, do this, I'm sure we could. You know, that's not bad, is it? What have we got here? Well, that's a, that's a decent carabiner. Where I get my stuff from the hardware shop, I don't go to climbing shops. I think I, I think I picked this one up for a couple of quid, and that's a, a solid rigging. Is that as, as you can see, it's a proper. These are cheap pound shop ones, but uh, just uh, putting little prussics on or anything like that. Little mountains, guys. There we are. Uh, so, yeah. So it's easy enough to stick one of those through there. Oh, I need three hands here. <laughs> Excuse me if I can't see up for the moment. Just put a stick on the desk. There we are, you can see that carabiner in. That's pretty. Uh, You've got a nice little ventilation there. As I say, you could make a piece that are fully enclosed out of a piece of the tarpaulin. I could bring these with longer guy lines so that I'd fetch that up. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, I'll just point this one out. Again, from your hardware shop. These are, these are not, I think they're about 50p each, that's stupid. Um, and they're just little screw gates. They're actually designed for um, chain link fences. Uh, you know, just normal chain, where they go that way, then that way, then that way, then that way. And then to, if you want to join the length something, then you use one of these. But they're very strong um, when they're screwed together. Great. Uh, for putting up your basher, get your little prussic loop on there to go on your ridge line, to tighten up. That in there, jobs, jobs are good and I think they're great. So if you can find yourself a proper old hardware shop that sells tools and everything, see if they've got anything like that in stock. In fact, I'm thinking of the <laughs> thinking of market them. I haven't seen them anywhere else. Right, as you can see, I've uh, done my own little thing on here, trying to break it up a bit more from the desert pattern. Uh, I think I'll have to have a go at that. Yeah. Anyway, I think I'm quite pleased with that. That's a good piece of that. Yeah, it works well. And, uh, there we go. Yep, that's all cool. Right. <coughs> That's the setting up. The farmer's just been in there. He to get his uh, tractor out. But they needed two to do it. <laughs> yeah, had to get one with a digger on. Just thought I'd show you this. This is what I used to use, but they were 
When I used to do it back in the 80s, I used to use 258 Bonjours. But they're a bit heavy and uh, they don't like much lighting. Uh, so I think it's a slight upgrade to go for some US government issue ones. If you can get hold of them, they are available. People have them. Uh, so, because this is a, if you wear two, right, these these two together are at 750 kilograms each. It says it's 50 kilograms, grams each, that's a bit right. So that's about one and a half kilograms of three pounds, which is about the size of a tent anyway. And that's a small tent, unless you spend a lot of money. Whereas with this, you've got uh, ample, ample room for two or three people at least. Uh, once it's set up properly. I'm just sort of, I'll just spread it out so you can see the full measurement of it. Three metres down this side, like it is, one and a half and one and a half, or 1.5, 1.5, yeah. Um, this one, I think this is seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, near enough. My my feet are about a foot long. Yeah. So I mean, it's a feral size, and you could make a, a, a feral basher with that. If you're travelling pairs, if you each have a poncho, you're quids in, aren't you? Now then. But for me, as I said, I, used to, I did pen around with two fifty-eight ponchos. Um, I used to have a lot about ten, but I figured I could di I can ditch a piece of the waterproof clothing, which I did. You gotta watch out for the uh, the old poncho sweating up like so you stick it over your bag so it's plentifully ventilated. The only problem is you can't do that when the wind gets up, otherwise you're a bit like a sail, so you've got to put it underneath the sack. Uh, which can be a problem then, but it's still great. Still a great piece of kit to uh, to keep the elements out and uh, of course you've got your own tent on when if you want to sit down. I was walking on the tops once and uh, great big thunder and lightning storm, all I did was I sat down as low as I could get my poncho and waited for it to pass over. I didn't get struck with lightning, you striking trees down in the morning, something like that, but it didn't bother me. Right, I'm just going to adjust this uh, to show you what it's like. There's a huge shelter for one person in fact. Um, these you would uh, also allow ventilation because being non-breathable, you can, I mean, you can even stick a stick up to keep them open. You could even light a fire in there. You've got a bit of a chimney, haven't you? A small, a small, uh, small stove, plenty of ventilation. But normally, what you do is you you whip up around the hood to stop any moisture coming in. You can also, if it's that strong, you can also use these for suspension points. Yeah, along with your so that like a traditional basher, you've got your end point there, plus it looping there onto a ridge line, ridge line passing passing through the ends of these or whatever and that suspends it plus you can put another loop in there in the centre with a twig through and that's another suspension point so you can use this as a good basher anyway yeah very versatile piece of kit a little heavier weight than the basher i've got but still very good and it's got the camouflage to blend in in green situations as well whereas i think the one i've got Blending in uh, the desert one, certainly blending in that sort of straw like place. But it could be better in the, uh, in the woodland and on the, on the green deck if you want to blend in. Right, I'll set it up for uh, as, a, as a shelter. Just for one, you'd, you'd need to make hoops or something like that. I think you'd need to suspend to make it uh, pl plenty of room inside, but. Uh, yeah, I think I can set it up. Right, the final setup of the day. As I said, I'd set up the poncho. That's the way I used to set mine up. Uh, when I did the pen I wear the first time. I mean, the, the, the uh, 58 ponchos, okay, they might be a bit heavier, but they're a lot more heavier weight than these. Uh, you know, they'll stand a lot more, uh, shall we say, uh, well treatment. I mean, I, I'm, as far as I can tell, these are, are genuine. I haven't sent it back because I don't really need the, the other popper. One of these poppers came out when I got it. I only need one set to make the little poncho set up, set up so I didn't bother sending it back. But uh, I did get a bit because as well as being uh, lighter, they're lighter inside as well. Now you can see, you could probably just, you can get in there without touching the sides too much as a single person. But if there were two of you, you'd have to, uh, 
you have to spread it out either with some springy boughs or using the suspension point as I've done here, you know, I've used it for that. Well, that could quite easily go into a ridge line, which you could set up with the uh, you know, with a couple of branches or something like that, tied to a tree or a fence post or anything like that. But you've got your doorway there with poppers. Yeah, it just pops in. And that to me, uh, I think these cost me 23 quid plus postage. Uh, that's 23 quid each. So 50 quid. I dare say you can get a reasonable small tent, but nothing, nothing that's so flexible and so quick to set up. If you want shelter on the hills, you can't beat a poncho. Fast. That's not the only poncho I've got. I've got another lightweight one which I took out to Malaysia. I love my ponchos. <laughs> Yeah, there you can see it. That one popped out. I, I could probably get a replacement for it, but as I say, I don't really need it because I've got the, the centre line popped up. And that's, this is the only other formation I'd use it in, unless it was uh, as a traditional basher. Uh, but as you can see, that, that'll, that'll withstand the force tag gales, not go in the middle of the night. Peg down each, each place, or stake down, as the Americans say. Um, yeah, and to me, uh, I'll send the Alpha Temper, it's a bit compact, isn't it? <laughs> to a double poncho settle for that little bit of extra weight. You know, what is it, less than a bag of sugar? Yeah, or a bag of rice, or whatever you call it. Must be of some, some weight. But that will do, that's, that's bomb proof, is that? I might have wanted to book a boat. It's the only thing you've got to worry about. You just make sure the driving rain isn't coming in there, you know. Face the wind with that away from it, and make sure that your uh, your hoods are tied up and secured. Uh, but as I say, when it when the rain stops or you get condensation, you stop anywhere for a while. Just open it up, even put a stick up, face them into the wind, so you've got uh, air blowing into the uh, into the shelter. They soon dry out, uh, and that's why. That's why walking poles are so good. Look at that. The other thing is, well, I set it up that way. Um, the good thing about that, with it having a walker's handle, it's not going to sink into the earth like, you know. But even so, you can get around that. Yeah. Something as simple as a tin lid, chopped off, uh, and, that, and that can spread the weight. Your pole goes on there, and it won't sink into the deck. So. It's, it's pretty easy stuff. Another thing, jam jar bottom even. I have these little things in here if I want to put sticks up or anything. If it's soft ground, then uh, you've got something to put the end of your pole on. So, there you have it. I hope uh, you enjoyed my little lesson. Well, as I say, the, the reason why I got these was is lighter inside, and you can see why I went for the, uh, the Desert Basher rather than the DPM one for the same reason. It's just lighter inside, that's all. And if I if I'm going somewhere where, where, where I want to blend in, I can I can use these. Although I might end, I like I like the way that basher sets up in that tent formation, so I might get another one in DPM or even the uh, MTC multi-terrain pattern. Yep. Anyway, what time are we gone? Oh, 25 to 4, not bad. Great. That's been a success. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope I've given you some good ideas for setting up your tarps and your bashes. Cheers for now.